If you are a retoucher like me, we use this Photoshop every single time for your everyday job. You use Photoshop to do your frequency separation, you do your dodge and burn, you have to submit pictures to clients, you have to do teeth whitening, you have to sharpen and all. You need Retouch Academy. And that's why I'm making this video to tell you about Retouch Academy so that you understand it more and see reason to buy it. So, um, making this video. So first of all, let's take this out, delete. So this is how the frequency separation looks like. What I'm using here is 4.1. Most of us might be using the lower version based on how we got it, but it's fine. And most of us who got it still do not know what is in the plugin. So in this video, let's go through every single thing that we use on a daily. So first of all, you normally we normally use frequency separation. We use the Gaussian blur method, which is this first one via Gaussian blur. We click it, let's just we select our radius and we say okay. Another thing about it is some of us, we just press it because we see people using it, we just use. We don't know why we are using it. So I'm going to go through the whole work line of this. So the first part we have is the high frequency. We all know that when we, doing a, when we are doing a frequency separation, we have the high frequency and we have the low frequency. The high frequency is where the texture is and the low frequency is where the color is. So now just not to work destructively they have duplicated the high frequency so whatever you're doing in this high frequency if you make a mistake you just delete it and bring this this one back you just maybe maybe you let's let's just try and as you can see i'm not even using mouse because you just i just want to show you how to use it this image was shot with a natural light so i'll use my clone stamp so what you do in your high frequency is you try to remove blemishes remove some hard areas that you feel you don't want to see in the image that is what you do with your high frequency your low frequency is where you brush to match the colors so i have increased the size of my brush then i'll just do that then for example i mistakenly painted like this to remove the high bro once i do that the best option if I know my the amount of undo I have is all used, I will just have to delete this. Once I delete this, I can just press Ctrl J. It will show me more texture. Then I'll hold down my Alt and just stay in between the line, the line between the, the both of them and just click. So once you do that, it's going to, it's going to now be, uh, clips to that particular layout but after we do that you notice that it's showing us that the texture is even more than the way it was that's not enough reason for you to be scared just change it back to normal once it changes back to normal everything goes back to normal so we are painting there non-destructively just to fix our images so that's how we use that then for this empty layer there are two ways people use frequency separation one of them is when you're working on current layout so if you're working on current layout our current layout right now we don't have anything on it let me say i mean let me bring the brush and paint in our current layout we don't have anything nothing is there so no matter how i paint it will not be affecting anything in our current layout nothing is there nothing so the only way we can paint something in there is to change is to change the brush is to make sure we are owning sample or all layout so if you want to use sample or layout that means we are going to be sampling everything that is above it and everything that is below it. So if you want to do that, let me tell you where the problem is. Once you click it and start painting, you see what it's doing? It's doing this because there are textures above the correction tone. So you cannot paint into that particular one unless, let's undo that, unless you turn off this particular one. So if you turn off the high frequency, you can paint. Now, if you paint whatever you're painting, 
will just be texture. At the end, if you turn it on, the and will just be color. At the end, if you turn it on, you see that the color is being affected, but the texture is still the way it is. That is why they, they, they made two options for you. So let's undo that. Let's undo that and turn it on. So how do we use this particular settings while not turning on just like not turning on off the high frequency so that we can watch work with the low frequency we have to make sure this is off so that we'll not be working with anything that is above it we just want to work with current layout so that this is our current layout which is this one we have here so if you want to work with the blur method you can use any of this you can use current layout you can also use the correction tone but i like using the the um low frequency to work so i normally turn this off so i will just if i start painting like this you'll notice that it is working just as i would want it to be i'm painting now so that is how you use this frequency separation for your images this particular class is not for those that are just beginning beginning because for that, we need to do a separate class. Then let's go back to the beginning and just start working along. So for Dodge and Bone, there are two ways we do our Dodge and Bone. We use Curve or we use the D, DB Gray. Like we use Dodge and Bone Gray, Gray Layout. So let's try our DB Curve. The DB means Dodge and Bone. Let's try our Curve. Once you click on it, these things will just run actions for instead of it to start buying actions buying these buying different actions this thing has everything for you so once we turn this on like this we can just um start painting this is so we can just come to this down layout here which is this one and it's already showing you the dodge and burn so if you want to burn if you want to darken the image this for this now we have to use our regular brush so you now paint on the areas that you want to darken you paint on those areas then the areas you want to brighten you just paint on those areas then you turn this off once you're done then let's zoom out once you zoom out you can see your before sorry your before Oh, sorry. Your before and your after. Your before and your after. You can delete this. The reason why they normally give you a black and white layout when you want to do dodge and burning is so you can see where you're dodging and where you're burning. So when you're done, you can delete it. As you can see, it's written here, delete. So when you're done, you just delete it. The software was just programmed to just make your work easy. So there you go. You can at the end maybe just... Uh, feather it a little feather a bun uh, let's feather the dodge feather it you can feather it like this and let's check a before and after before and after so that is the normal using curve to create a dodge and bun so let's try the next one which is the gray dodge and bun gray a lot of you still don't know how this dodge and bun gray works for the gray now we have to use we have to use our our dodge and burn here here is written dodge so we have to make sure we are dodging dodge is the bright part we have to not dodge we have to brighten the areas we want to brighten with our dodge then for our burn we click on the layout then we'll go to burn and we burn those areas we want to burn down so you'll be you'll be the one to decide which of them you want to use once you're done you check your before and your after you can reduce the opacity to the amount that you like the most that is for that so let's duplicate that let's delete that then every other thing here what you're seeing here is if you want to do your dodge separately and your burn you can click on dodge you can click on burn that is for that so for our frequency separation we'll come back we normally use just the gaussian blur but we still have median we have the median option where you select your radius as usual then it's going to create this for you 
is still the same thing high frequency low frequency and correct short tone so you decide which one you want to use i know some person that use mediums for their image every day then if you want to create digital texture maybe your image is not that sharp you want to create texture for your image you can just click on texture here then let's zoom in let's zoom in for this image i think i have a lot of texture so you just paint it in as you're seeing it might not be obvious for your screen but it's already showing here that i'm adding texture to the image add texture so this works when you shoot your image and maybe the amount of texture you want is not there or maybe your image was a little bit blur and you the image is looking too smooth you want to add texture you have digital texture to add to your image here then the next one we want to go to is luminosity imagine you have all this in one place and you're not you're not using this software luminosity then we click on basic what this is helping us do is is helping us select the highlights let me show you why i said it's selecting the highlights i can add more of the highlights more areas of the highlight increase it i can decrease it so it doesn't matter how much it's, uh, it's being selected it doesn't matter how much it's been selected you can invert it if you want to go back and select the dark areas so for now i am selecting the highlight so i'll just create a curve layout for this highlight then i'll just maybe move it up once i move it up you see that the highlight is becoming brighter your before and your after you can even after doing this you can just put it in a group then once you put it in a group you can just hold down alt and click on the mask to hide it then paint into the areas that you want the highlights to be showing i know you won't want the highlights to be everywhere you can use this for your dodge and burn also you can use this to make your image glow you can use it for your dodge and burn so after doing this you see that your image is shining already and the, the shine is looking very very natural so you can now maybe just decrease it decrease the opacity reduce it then you see your before and your after you have a very good looking shine in your image for those of you who have been asking how do i make my image shine here you go you can make your image shine like this then let's delete that then we'll go to we'll go to magic skin this is something a lot of persons really need to watch magic skin so what magic skin will help us do is once you open it i don't normally use the this other one i just use the one above i'll click it and just select a particular area of the skin let me say i select this area of the skin then i say okay then i'll paint it this magic skin is if we want to uh, match our skin so i'll just paint all these areas paint it in paint it in like this so if you're using your wacom it's easier so you know the areas you're painting it into so now if you look at this image very well the skin is now matching more than the way it was before skin matching is is very very unique because of the way they did it is very very fine for you to use it's not looking like when you just use your gradient or when you just use your normal um what do you call it your normal um color you just pick a color and just you change the blend mode to color this is way way more better than that so let me show you something about the way this was made it was made like when you just come and you add um, this to your image then you invert it then you paint it into these areas uh, then you come to image come to image here then come to apply apply image then you say multiply and multiply is fine then then that yeah so let's move to let's move to the next one which is skin glow you click on your skin glow and once you click on it just like what we do we did before with luminosity you can just add the glow to the areas where you want the glow to be this is not that it's not very very pronounced you can come here and uh, increase it 
increase the amount of glow you want to get from your image you have the option to do what you want to do with your image but they reduced it because it doesn't have to be very very harsh so that's for that so we take that off then we'll go to the next one which is i might not be clicking because of time the next one is magic eyes once you click on magic eyes it will just once it's, it's done running the action you just see that this will help you make your eye look very white if you are that type that wants a very white eye as, as you can see you get a very white eye you can invert your brush and paint it away from this edge then also you can change the color of your eyes so you paint you paint the color you want here let me still zoom in then you click it you can change the color to whatever color you want your image to be like what's your what you want the eyes to look like you can change the color you can also work on the brightness of the eyes you can reduce the opacity so that it will not be too harsh you can do all of that so you really need this software the next thing we want to do is to go to magic smile magic smile is to help you clean your teeth then what else I think those are like the things we use normally and everything is in one software so it's enough reason for you to get the software if you want to get the software i have a link that you can use in buying it and get a, a beautiful fine 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 percentage of maybe you, you just get some amount of money that will be removed for you to buy you don't have to spend the whole of your money to buy it there is a, a percentage that you get off like maybe six, you get about 20 15 percent off or so from buying every information you need about getting this uh, plugin is on my description box the name of this plugin is called frequencies and um, retouch academy the name of this plugin is called retouch academy so i will urge you to get this plugin and use it for your everyday work so you don't have to start borrowing or begging action or start creating action you have everything in one software so once again please for my sake do it to buy this software because if you buy it i might also get something from the software and i hope this class was helpful ladies and gentlemen thank you and i'll see you in my next video